this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Zillow and put in zip code 30327. Do that real quick. And I want to talk about a growing problem. Let me tell you about Sandy Springs. That's where I used to live before I moved here. Sandy Springs has been systematically getting rid of the riffraff. There were three strip clubs in Sandy Springs. They changed the ordinance. They pulled their liquor license. All those strip clubs are closed. They got rid of the low income housing. There was some low income housing on Roswell Road. They literally tore it down and built $600,000 townhomes on top of that. And there is an area on Roswell Road just before 285 that's kind of like the ghetto of Sandy Springs. That's where a lot of Hispanics live and that's where a lot of the lowest, lower, lower income housing is. It was, because some of that rent's kind of crazy. And what has happened, and this is something else that's happened in Sandy Springs. If you haven't been around here, you don't know how Sandy Springs used to be. There were neighborhoods that used to be all ranch houses sitting on one acre and two acre lots. Systematically, they've been knocking down those ranches and they have been putting up mansions. So this is just to prep you to how hard the city of Sandy Springs has worked to get rid of low income housing, strip clubs. Uh, when I was in the car business, uh, you cannot start a car dealership in the city of Sandy Springs unless you have a property that was zoned automotive and you get grandfathered in. So this is just to preference what I'm about to say. When I moved to Sandy Springs, I did not see one homeless person, not one. And then about 2016, two of them kind of showed up. And once again, the people of Sandy Springs were kind hearted. They actually took care of these people. They gave them money. They did stuff for them. And that was the longest. Then the pandemic hit. What's going on? Check it out. This video is brought to you by Intellectual Property School, which is at B School for Hustlers. Let me tell you what's in store for you if you act now. I'm going to teach you how to set up a YouTube channel and make money where the YouTube channel is making money. Then I'm going to teach you how to set up a YouTube channel. It can be small, three, four, five, six, seven thousand subscribers and make five to fifteen thousand dollars per month. Then I'm going to teach you how to create an online course. Then I'm going to teach you how to write a book. So there's so many things that's going on in the intellectual property school. And there's going to be a t-shirt. I got someone working on that now. And there's going to be a group. So let me tell you what I'm planning on doing. During the first stages, it's not going to happen because I got to hire someone. But what's going to happen is when you sign up for the intellectual property school, you're, I'm going to have what's called an online proctor. And this is going to be someone you can ask questions and they will respond to you between hours of maybe 9 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, Standard Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time. And I'm putting together a whole bunch of stuff. Like right now, this is why I'm pre-launching it because I'm trying to put all the pieces together. And right now, you get access to home economics, which is going to take you two or three weeks to do. And you get the first training session, which is extremely important. That's going to take you some time to do. So don't wait until June 30th to jump in. Jump in now. The link is below. Use the promo code creator to get in. I started seeing homeless people everywhere. So 2020 up until the day, I've seen about 60 to 70 homeless people literally all over Sandy Springs. And these people are not coming from Sandy Springs. They're being they're they're migrating from other places because the Sandy Springs Police Department doesn't harass you. I'm a speeder. I've had that Porsche up to 150, the BMW to 140. And I've only gotten one speeding ticket because the police are, they do their job. They're not looking to entrap you. So I think the word has gotten out that the police department will not mess with you if you're homeless in Sandy Springs. And literally I was taking pictures of them because I noticed they should start popping up every week. I was like, that's a homeless person. That's a homeless person. That's a homeless person. That's a homeless person. 
And I tell you this, that the city of Sandy Springs, with their multi-billion dollar developments, is being besieged by homeless people. Can you imagine what's happening elsewhere? I want you to put in the comments if you're in a city where the homeless uh, problem is growing. I know that California and San Francisco are the epicenter for the homeless people. The state of California has half the homeless people in the state in the United States. New York has a lot of homeless people, but Arizona is emerging as a new homeless hotspot. And what I see with the global reset is you were living in a house, now you live in an apartment, you were living in an apartment, now you're living in a van or you're living on the street. And I see the homeless problem exploding because if a city like Sandy Springs that has systematically work to get rid of the riffraff, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but the homeless people would come under the category as riffraff. Um, and this is something else too. The citizens of Sandy Springs are on high alert. I know someone that knows a lady that lives on Northside Job, Northside Drive, and her house was, she was a victim of a home invasion. People broke in her house, put a gun to her head, a gun to her daughter's head, and this is a multi-million dollar property. This is a place with just a gates and a long driveway. So, the you know, Sandy Springs, there's Sandy Springs proper, which is not part of the city of Atlanta. And there's a part of Sandy Springs closer to Buckhead that is a part of the city of Atlanta. Those people who are closer to Buckhead and are kind of used to certain things since they're close to the city of Atlanta and Chastain Park. But... From what I see, just observing what has happened in the city of Sandy Springs, homelessness is exploding across the United States. And I'm going to say why. When I was a kid, everyone had a grandfather, a grandmother, grandfather, auntie, uncle living in the house with them. When I grew up in Adamsville, 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 Alabama, it was a low income neighborhood, but there were no homeless people because everyone had family. And I feel that the reason that the homeless population is exploding is the breakdown of the nuclear family, therefore the breakdown of the extended family. So I know five or six people, if I fell upon hard times, I could move in with. We live in a society where there are people, when they hit hard times, they have no one. No one to turn to, no one to talk to, no one to seek counsel with. They are on their own. And this is the breakdown of society. And I'm getting ready to say something. And I'm going to speak to my men folk because believe it or not, the problem starts with you. Take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. I'm just a messenger. You're bigger than that woman. You're stronger than that woman. You were put here to, prevent, to protect, to provide, and to lead to be the head of household. Now, I will say... There's a ton of female savages out there, but I'm here to tell you there's a ton of really good women out there. But here's the problem, and I'm going to share this story with you. About 15, 16 years ago, I had a friend of mine who was extremely good looking. I would literally see women throwing themselves at this guy. Like we would go to lunch, I would become invisible. <laughs> it was just like all about him, right? And he had no player energy whatsoever, none whatsoever. Then one day he calls me up, Cam! I was like, what's up? It's like, I met somebody. All right, all right. She nice, she nice. He's like, we have a connection. I was like, I've never heard you speak like this before, my boy. Well, let's drop it, drop it. We, we have the best conversations. And it's like, I think I'm in love. I was like, really? All right. All right, you in love? That's nice, that's nice. I support that, I support that. And then I can feel there, there's a problem. There's something coming up. And I was like, okay, my dude, I know you well enough to know there's something else. What's wrong with her? She fat. I'm like, I'm gonna say this to you. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna speak to you as a friend. I've known you five or six years and you have never called me 
this excited. Even though this woman may be fat, she does something for you that these other women haven't done for you. And my dude, go with it. If she make you happy, go with it. If you out in public, hold her fat little hand and walk in public with her and be proud because we only have so many opportunities in this life to be happy. And I can tell she's making you happy with her fat little ass. I may join you. I may clown on you because I'm I ain't, I ain't seen you nothing. I ain't seen you fuck nothing but tents. I may clown you, but it'll be in love because you're my dude. And if she makes you happy, I am happy for you. Claim this woman. Do the damn thing. And this is my advice to you because I, I remember telling them, I was like, remember our aunts and uncles? Like you would see this really good looking man with this average and kind of plain woman. Back in the day, men dated women on character, not looks. It was character first. Men dated solid, good women all the time, all of the time. And I told them, I was like, be like your uncle, be like your granddaddy, date a solid woman and be happy because these men got married to these women and they stayed married. So we, we had a car. He said, all right, all right. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. And then, you know, he started laughing and stuff. And then I meet her. And I'm like, my friend, once again, he's extremely handsome. And he was used to knocking down tens. This girl is like maybe 20, 25 pounds overweight. She has a shape. She's got some big, bodacious legs. She's got this beautiful smile. And she's a wonderful human being. When I met her and I talked to her, I was like, when I pulled him aside, I was like, if you don't marry this bitch, I will. Man, stop playing. She's fine. She's just a little overweight. Look past that. Look past that. He said, you know, I listened to our conversation and, you know, um, the day we talked, I asked her to be my girlfriend. She said, yes. It's like, go ahead, fist pound, pound, pound. They've been married for 16 years and they have three children. So what I'm saying is stop looking for the baddest bitch. Stop looking for the finest chick. Stop looking for the wettest pussy. Stand up, be men, be protectors and providers, and find yourself a good, solid woman because they're out there. Because this homeless problem, if, if men don't start doing this, society as we know it is going to crumble. It's just going to crumble. It's just going to crumble. So with that, the city of Sandy Springs is besieged with homeless people. A city that by grand design has worked very hard to root out the riffraff and they're just coming in every time I go to Sandy Springs and you know even though I live in Buckhead I kind of still hang out in Sandy Springs because Buckhead is too crowded it's too active there's a smoothie king around the corner I go in there there's always a line 15 20 people I can go to my smoothie king in Sandy Springs walk in get my smoothie and be out so this global reset is nasty it is going to be so nasty. And I have an opportunity for you in real estate investors. If you can find a 15 or 25 or 35 apartment, unit apartment complex, do not rent out the apartments. Rent out the rooms. You will make more money and your occupancy rate will always stay high. Rent out the room. Because right now, if you go by any extended stay motel they are crowded because these are the people who have jobs but for some reason they fell upon hard times they got evicted and they cannot rent an apartment or a house but they can rent a room and they're paying more for that room than they would be paying for an apartment or a house so like i said the customer base for renting a room is about to explode uh when i was in london I met this engaging young lady in the hotel and she like had five roommates. There were six people living in a the spot. They didn't even know each other. What has happened in London many years ago is coming to America. You're going to have people who don't know each other in two bedroom apartments. You're going to have four people. They're going to work it out. They're going to work it out because we are about to go through something in the next 10 years that is going to be cataclysmic. It's going to be cataclysmic. Because right now, there are so many people who are in pain. There are so many people who they just have nowhere to turn. And they're going to be sleeping in their car. Like Rose Hand 
of investment roles. She's a millionaire that chooses to live in the van. There's another girl by the name of Christian Schaefer. She makes six figures. She chooses to live in a van. I call that white folk van living, Asian van living. And there's another group of people who are in a piece, broke down van, barely making it because they have to be there. They have to be there. And this transformational shift that is about to happen is going to change the fabric of America. I believe the next three to five years, we will see some version of universal basic income, which is going to be ironic since in 13 years, Social Security is supposed to be bankrupt. And we, everyone that works, they take money out your check for Social Security. So that's a fund that is having additional contributions. I feel the reason that Social Security is going to be bankrupt is there's too many people pulling out of the pool versus just retirees. Like, you know, kids get Social Security checks. There, there's all kinds of things. There's so many Social Security pro programs that are draining the money. But I don't know where they're going to get the money, but I feel, and I'm making a bold prediction. If the economy melts down the way that I think it's going to melt down, Joe Biden would be a one-term president. And if Trump runs again, Trump will win. Which is going to be interesting because with Trump in the House as a Republican president and the Republican, let's say the Republicans take over the House and the Senate again, the universal basic income thing is kind of very much democratic. So I don't know how that's going to work, but I feel that it's going to work itself out in the next three to five years. We will see a form of universal basic income and we already have generational poverty. We have cycles of people who are born and die in poverty because I'm about to tell you something. You know what is the best predictor of you having financial success? Having rich parents. You can be a kid with a genius level IQ, 140 and above, in the middle of the hood, and you can have a little kid over here in the suburbs with a 140 IQ, and the kid in the suburbs is going to get to expand his potential. Because see, this is something I've seen in the hood. Smart little kids get used and abused in the hood. Like, maybe you're good at math. They may have you running numbers or selling drugs or crunching numbers or count, running the books. So really smart little kids get exploited in the ghetto. And case in point, George W. Bush, who wasn't the smartest kid, but he was born in a rich family. It makes all the difference in the world. And what you're going to see, except for the most athletically talented little kids, Bryce Young, the quarterback for University of Alabama, two parents, and his parents look like they got money. Steph Curry, two parents. Parents had, father was in the NBA. Patrick Mahomes, two parents. Father played in Major League Baseball. So what you're seeing is the matriculation of the best of the best kids with natural athletic talent and parents who have the money to explore that talent. It's going to be real hard for a Pookie and Ray Ray to get in the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball in the future. Right now, you got some poor woman putting all her nickels together to send her kid to one of these camps because she knows that it makes a difference going to these camps. It makes a huge, 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 huge difference. So as we go on the global reset, you're going to see the homeless population and put in the comments, if you're in a place where homelessness is exploding, put that in the comments. Let's see where you are and what's happening because California, Los Angeles and San Francisco, San Francisco were the epicenter for homelessness. And then New York is known for homelessness. But look at what happened to Sandy Springs, Georgia a wealthy enclave and is being besieged by homeless people. And I'm gonna keep it the buck, most of them black. I saw, and this is the, the first two homeless people were black and the recent ones, I'm gonna say from a racial split down, they're 70% black and 30% white because I went to the vitamin shop to get some uh, probiotics. Once again, here's a public service announcement. Start taking probiotics. It will help you with your digestion like you will not believe. And uh, there was this guy in a sleeping bag on the, right outside the vitamin shop. And I was just like, 
And the lady in the shop knew his name was Caleb. And I'm just sitting there like, how long has he been there? She said, weeks. That's where he sleeps. And I'm telling you, this homeless problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse. The next 10 year window, but once again, you're going to see it. And also, with the ushering in of universal basic income, we're going to create a permanent underclass. A permanent underclass. We already have a permanent lower class. This is just going to cement it because when you give people money, you destroy their incentives. And they're not like going to be in major dollars. They're just going to be a little chump change. A little chump change. A little change. And this is going to have people living in some type of spaces. They're just not going to be living proper. And you're going to see all kind of crazy stuff. Because with the breakdown of the nuclear family, and the breakdown of the extended family, people don't have nobody. Sex work is going to explode. That trick right now is a sugar baby on whatever website who wants a thousand dollars to come to sleep with her. Three years, she's going to be doing something. Because she's going to be doing See, this is what happens when people are dealing with do I do this? Or do I do this? These are the type of decisions. Do I pay the electric bill or do I go to the grocery store? These are the type of decisions that people are going to start making. And a lot of people already making these kind of decisions. This is something I saw with my car rental business. A flat tire was a financial crisis. Uh, let me say this again. A flat tire was a financial crisis. Now, once again, I drive very expensive cars, so I'm used to the high repair bills. Like tires on my BMW, they're 500 bucks a piece. Uh, to change the brakes on the front, it's 2,000. I'm used to it, because I've been driving these cars for a while, so that doesn't phase me. But for someone who goes out and gets one of these expensive cars, and I, I was having a conversation with my mechanic about it, people are blown away about the maintenance costs of these high-end cars. This is why I tell you, don't be financing these cars. Pay cash. Because, you know, fortunately, my cars are pretty new. So there's really, I don't have any maintenance issues. And I got um, warranties on both of them. So, and both of them are really low miles. So I'm not even worried about it. And that Porsche, that Porsche will be gone in September when the new one comes in. But I saw firsthand the beginning of the lower of the permanent underclass and the people who were renting my cars. Shout out to James Anderson. He was renting cars on hire car and he ran into the same problems when he was trying to sell these cars to these people. They had absolutely no money. So what we're seeing is society devolve to people because I always thought it was strange when McDonald's started paying people daily. but. I talked to a manager, he said, if we don't pay them daily, they don't have enough money to get to work the next day. This is how financially pressed people are. So right now, you've got someone who has a job, they're paying their bills, they're paying their car note, they're paying everything, and they got two, 300 bucks left over. And they're, they're gonna have something happen. Maybe the car is gonna break down, maybe they have a medical issue, and six months from the time that they have this crisis, this financial crisis, a medical issue, they will be homeless. They will be homeless. They will be homeless. And some people, it's only gonna take three months. This is how people, you know that song, I'm close to the edge. People are standing on the edge. They're standing on the edge. And it, it, it doesn't take much to push them over. Doesn't take much. And this is one of the reasons that crime is about to explode. Like crime has been exploding, but we haven't seen it because our rich journey, my favorite people to pick on, they agree with me with Bitcoin. They think Bitcoin is going to out of $3,000. But one of the things that they said that the stock market was going to go down, and I'm seeing a lot of people who are knowledgeable, who are in that space, 
They're saying stock market's going to go down. Uh, Clearview ta Clear Value Tax says crypto's going down, and he's a fan of crypto, and the stock market's going down. And Michael Blurry, the guy who predicted the 2008 recession, says we haven't seen nothing yet. So when it really hits, and I hope it doesn't happen, I hope I'm wrong, but we're going to get as close to the Great Depression levels during this cycle as we've ever come. We're going to get very close because the stock market is still doing double monkey backflips. And this is the longest period that the stock market has been down since the Great Depression. And it ain't going to get better no time soon. We're going to go through probably a rough two years in the market. And what's going to happen is a lot of these people who bought crypto high and had to sell low, they're never coming back to crypto. They're like, it's like you sleep with this bad chick and she give you the never again. Never again will I ever go there. And we're going to see a lot of things. But once again, one of the reasons that we're seeing an explosion in homelessness is the breakdown of the nuclear family. And I spoke to the men because that's where the problem starts. The problem ain't with the women. Let, let me just let me just say something. Let me put something out here. When you as a masculine man enter the room in your masculine it will make even a savage get in her submissive state. Uh, this is from experience. This is from experience. And I'm going to say something. I've had many women fall in love with me because of the masculine frame that I present. Fall head over head. I'm going to tell you, I had this chick who got physical because I was honest. I was like, yeah, I'm having sex with other chicks. You're my number one, but there's a two and a three. And I, tell, I was sitting there telling her about it. And she got very, very angry and very jealous. And she still gave it up that night. And she still did everything I wanted her to do that night. Even though she knew that I... So, guys, I understand that many of you were not raised with any sense of masculinity or any strong role models. I get that. I get that, but guys, you need to get in your masculine frame because right now, during this transformational period, women are gonna get a case of act right like you ain't never seen before. You're gonna see the hardest, the coldest Cardi B loving, and she's gonna be submissive and humble as a lamb because this new economy is nasty. It ain't playing with folks. It's like the power company. You don't pay your bill, they turn your power off. They don't care if you got kids. They don't care if you got a newborn baby. They don't care. You don't pay that bill, we're turning it off. That's the new economy. You don't pay the bills, your stuff gets turned off. This new economy is nasty. It ain't playing with people and it's gonna set the tone. It's gonna set the tone and it's gonna be brutal. Cause like I said, murder, it's gone up. Petty crime has gone up. Suicide has gone up. Drug addiction has gone up. And we're just in the beginning stages of all this, which just spells massive homelessness across the nation. Because look at what happened in Sandy Springs, Georgia. A wealthy enclave. Like who lives? Who lives in my Arthur Blank? He lives in the Buckhead area, not necessarily Sandy Springs, but I know where Arthur Blank lives. This is happening in his backyard. Man worth billions owns the Atlanta Falcons and this is the kind of stuff. The riffraff, Sandy Springs has worked so hard to get rid of the riffraff and the riffraff is like rolling in, rolling in. And I feel that just like it happened in Sandy Springs, it's gonna happen in other cities in America. And once again, if this is happening in your city, put it in the comments, let us know what is going on where you are because this thing is, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. And I thank God that I did the things that I did to elevate myself out of that situation. Because in that boarding house, I was just a few checks away from being homeless myself. And people are so financially pressed. And this is why home economics 
is a foundational course for everything I do because people need to learn how to manage their money. It's imperative for long-term success. It's imperative, man. You got to do it. But man, homelessness is about to explode across the nation. For real.